The Data Engineering Show is brought to you by Firebolt. It's the cloud data warehouse for insanely fast analytics over terabytes of data with fewer resources. Hi, and welcome back, everyone, uh, to, to the Data Engineering Show. Uh, it's, it's super cool. Uh, today, we have another uh, set of experienced podcasters joining us, Doron uh, and Liran. Uh, perfect. Oh, I, lo- uh, I love your R. I love it. <laughs> Thank like you. you would try really uh, hard. It's just yeah. I, uh, it's like uh, in. I mean, I speak German. That's my native language. Oh. So we have uh, <laughs> some some R's in there as well. So I, I practiced really hard before the episode. Sounds great. Um, it's really good. Awesome. Uh, yeah. And uh, Doran uh, is a director of uh, infrastructure at Yotpo. I hope I pronounced that correctly yeah, as well. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> You're the only person in the world who can pronounce this. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and and Liran uh, is a director of engineering at ZipRecruiter uh, and also was at Yotpo before. Uh, do you guys just kind of want to give a brief intro, uh, tell us what you're up to, tell us about your podcast, uh, and then and then we'll dive right in. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, what? What? Okay, I'll start. Yeah. So, um, okay. Um, I'll start from uh, me, and and then we'll go to the podcast. So, born in Yavne. Yeah, I was born in Yavne. Forty-seven years ni- ago, nineteen twenty-three. <laughs> um, so I, I worked at Yapo for twenty-five years. Um, uh, <laughs> no, just a long, long time. I was born at Yapo floor four. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we started at floor number one, and we reached up the, to yeah. floor number twenty-six, um, right above a fireball. But yeah, I worked at Yapo for a, a long time. I started as a um, as a team leader for the data engineering team. Later on, we became uh, an infrastructure group. Um, the team grew. I became the, the group uh, leader for the, for the data infra. And um, we built an amazing data platform here together. Yeah. Uh, Liran and I, he was, he was actually my, my, my predecessor. Like he was the, the infrastructure group manager. Um, and, and I replaced him recently. Yeah, doing, doing a much better job, I Yes, so I do everything better. Yeah. Uh, so n- now, now everything is better here. Less people, <laughs> right? With less people. Yeah. yeah, we're running very lean. Benjamin, don't get any ideas in your head. <laughs> <laughs> no, it works only if you're a woman. Um, yeah, and and we 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 have a, a, a joined a child. No, we don't have a child. Oh we have a podcast a that podcast. we we've been uh, uh, um, podcasting for a year and a half. About yeah. a year and a half. Uh, also about uh, data, data engineering and all the the surrounding world. Um, but it's in Hebrew. So, it's in Hebrew, so, so we're not really yeah, competing. Yeah, it's not yeah, the same audience. Yeah, I, I yeah, tried. I tried preparing for for the show, and like Tamar sent me your podcast, and then I was like, shit. Uh, <laughs> oh, so there is there is one episode in English which so he learned happy. Hebrew. He learned yes. Hebrew. Yes. There you go. Ah, Hebrew. That's, that's the first time. Even second half. Yeah, he's, like, he's if so, you if you're even start like it's so it's fast that how fast we talk on the, in the episodes. So I don't think it's good for you as, as like the beginner way to learn Hebrew. So do do okay. it. Sorry, sorry. With friends or something in Hebrew. I don't know if there is a version. Um, okay. <laughs> Oh, I, now me. Yeah, so I, I, I'm kind of like are always around Doron. <laughs> so all the stories kind of like um, in, intersects. Um, so yeah, I was at Yotpo. Before that, I did something else. I, I've, I've created like the data platform there, but also I did a lot of other different roles. And in, in my end position, I was running um, all of the platform engineering at Yotpo. So kind of like backend data and, and front end, which Doron is doing right now. Um, and then about eight months ago, I moved to ZipRecruiter and I'm, I'm doing the same there. Um, kind of like well, the same, but a bit different teams. So I also run the platform engineering, or you call it enablement, and around the area of ML experience, we call it, or like ML tools and all around ML data and also experimentation, which is a team that is um, building an experimentation platform for internally for our organization. So doing A-B testing and measuring everything. So it's really, it's really been fun. Data sets, data sets, data sets, data sets, like yeah. more output, more output. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So for, for listeners who are kind of uh, have never heard about Yotpo or ZipRecruiter before, kind of, do you want to give us a quick high-level overview of what uh, product the company is actually building or the different companies? Yeah, sure. So I think it's funny because I've been in Yotpo for a while. So we kind of started off as, as a, like branding ourselves as a, a marketing e-commerce platform. And we really became like a real platform uh, only in the past few years where we offer a set of different products uh, under the same um, platform uh, to help e-commerce businesses just just do better, be bigger and stuff like that. Uh, but recently, 
I think given like the, the latest changes changes in the in the ecosystem and the financial uh, macro environment um, like Yapo is trending towards being this uh, like retention platform for e-commerce businesses um, and we do this with the same set of tools but we're really focused on how uh, we can help e-commerce businesses online businesses uh, preserve their customers and enlarge their customer base through our products which are like review solutions, uh, loyalty programs, uh, referral programs, uh, communication channels, a uh, customer data platform, and more and more products like this. Um, so ZipRecruiter is a hiring marketplace, I think that's what they call it. Uh, basically help uh, both job seekers and employers find um, um, matches. Um, and we do that for customers from like really small mom and pop shops up into like customers like Amazon. Um, so we do like we do have different approaches for each of those customers, like from enterprise to the small businesses, uh, and we heavily rely on AI to do the matching uh, and other things in, in the sign system. So that's like kind of like kind of like our four days, like helping them really find good matches for both sides, and also kind of like balancing the market itself just completely. So that's kind of like the gist of it. And we're we're based all, both in uh, Israel and in the U.S. Nice. So I mean, this this is the data engineering show, right? And you guys obviously have have a bunch of experience, kind of in data, uh, kind of at, at a variety of companies. Uh, kind of take us take us through that, right? Like take us through the types of kind of data challenges you guys have in your day to day, and yeah, maybe tell us a bit about your stack. Maybe, maybe I'll start with the stack, and then I'll go on to to the challenges. I think it might make like more sense. So um, stack. So Okay, so I'll start from the like bottom up. That's comfortable for me. So uh, we're ingesting data into the data platform from all sorts of like different uh, data sources, whether it's like uh, operational databases, uh, third parties, uh, event data, whatever. Uh, and it's basically all streaming into the data lake. So the whole solution or platform is built around the data lake and it's very data lake centric. Um, based on AWS, um, that's all the workloads are running there. Um, and then uh, in the data lake, storing data, um, different formats, um, and using different techniques for transforming uh, the data and different engines, mostly Spark these days. Um, I think we're running a long time with Spark, like what Leon and I did together in Apple for many years is making um, like Spark a commodity. By perpetual license, it gives you the ability to use it for free on unlimited resources forever. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but, but I think it's like the, the our our challenge uh, like years ago was how to like um, make big data tooling available for like the generalist developer, uh, and later on also for BI developers and stuff like that. And and that was a big challenge in how like to democratize data sets as well as data tooling. Um, and we used to do this. Um, um, I think we had a different approach for this a few years ago, which changed and evolved over time as the platform grew uh, grew uh, older, uh, and and the company also uh, evolved and had like different needs and requirements. Um, so uh, orchestration, we're using uh, Airflow. Um, most of the like past pipelines are running using uh, this framework that we built internally in Yapo. It's also open source. It's called Metorico. Uh, where we write like uh, SQL files, like we YAML files with SQL statements uh, to describe the data pipelines. Uh, also, of course, streaming, um, mostly Spark structured streaming, also Flink uh, pipelines recently. Um, and then the whole analytics area of things. Um, first, we have DBT that we 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 like started using Yapo for the past year or so, a little over a year. But we built this whole framework. Around DBT uh, to like visualize the the new way of thinking of how like we should manage data in the organization, and it's also like an internal tool that we built, and it really connects between data producers and data consumers on the other end, where we have uh, Looker, uh, which we use for internal analytics or or external B two B analytics, either embedded dashboards or API, which is also um, something we're, we're leaning towards more and more uh, as time goes by. Yeah, uh, maybe ad hoc analytics is also like a big part of the thing, like making data available for everyone. So everyone are using Databricks um, clusters to to uh, to uh, like work on top of the data lake. And it means like uh, engineers, BI, analysts, support engineers, solution engineers, like everyone working on top of the data lake. 
Yeah, I think that that's like the big picture. Yeah. And if you ask about challenges, um, I think that in the podcast we talk a lot with people, and I think a lot of the times we go and talk to people that have like big data challenges. It's still it's still a thing. I mean, you think that like it's solved already, but people have big big data challenges. I think at Yapo, um, it's more like what keeps me busy. It's more data manageability um, and how to like architect this thing to work well at scale. Uh, serving a lot of people like here, we have an R&D of like 250, 260 people uh, and more and more like outer circles using the, the data um, and how we optimize this huge machine of money <laughs> into something that's much more like coherent and 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 robust and scalable and, and resilient over time. So data manageability, I think like in, in like a wide term, because I can talk like for hours about this. Uh, I'd say that's like where I am focused at the moment. Seems like data and, and, and everything you do with data is part of the feedback loop within engineering, within product building, like everything you do as engineering and product is, is using data. How is that like translated into user experience? the data. Um, a lot of what you've mentioned is internal, right? So it's for building products. How, how does that get translated into Yapo's business, for example? Um, I think like Yapo is not like per se a data product. Uh, I think that ZipRecruiter maybe is, is like uh, more like uh, an example of like how is data is like centralized uh, within the product. Um, data is a big thing. And, and like when, when I talk about experience, I mostly talk about, and that's like what my group is focused on. Like we talked about front end, back end, and data, uh, but we're very, very focused on developer experience. Uh, I think that where uh, our customers, like B2B customers, meet the data is um, places where we make it like, well, I'm not talking about all the machine learning, data science part of things. It's not really under my responsibility, but. Um, like analytics is becoming bigger and bigger. And I think it's also a part of what's going on like in the world <laughs> uh, that we are really focused on observability and like demonstrating ROI and helping them make the right decisions. And like Yapo is, is a complicated machine. Uh, and part of it is, I think it's almost like, like actionable BI, but all external. Uh, and it's the way to be organized the data in a way that helps them understand like how to navigate through the different products to bring more value. Uh, so I think that's where they touch on data the most. So I, I want to add that I think that what is happening is what we you know the, what we went through in the last couple of years is kind of like more and more and more use cases were added to the world of the data. Like what first, what type of consumers we have for data? So we are mostly being focused on internal, but also yeah, also external as well. Like we the data meets the customers in both companies. Like it's not like uh, you don't have to be a data company to to have the data reach somehow into production systems. Um, so there are more and more use cases just being added. More and more types of consumer they require different things and their experience, you know, or you know, their even their capabilities are different. So how can they access data? How can they produce data that is high quality? So I think that's kind of like for me. Like what I'm focused on and what I've been kind of, what is always changing in our, in our ecosystem. So what you're saying is 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 if your data platform shuts down, then internally engineering product uh, business would be won't be able to operate. It's so much embedded. It's so much intertwined. It's it's as you're saying like self serve. What is self serve? Is it opening the data for as as many as possible? So like. From your experience, is that is that real? Is that kind of something? So we try to build a decoupled system, right? I, I don't think it's great if the big data platform, which again, both of our companies is very data lake centric. I don't think that if this drops, like the business just like as soon as it, it like it's down, then everything goes down. Like I don't want to be at that position. So we need to have some kind of uh, differentiation between all of these backend processes, batch processing, even stream processing that happens managing both for ML or for analytics and the production systems, which actually needs to serve something to the customer that actually that they actually see. So again, the business will suffer some kind of uh, weird, maybe some late data will arrive to the system. Maybe something will be, I don't know, it, it may be visible to the users, but in the end, we don't want to be like where something actually, you know, is not working anymore in production. I, I think in my opinion. I've seen many people, you know, saving data sets eventually after they use all the stack, all the tools, they save it in Excel. Um, so it's, it's a backup, but it's also, yeah, it's, it's a failover mechanism. And, uh, 
eventually it all ends up in some report. So yeah, so we hear it all the time. And I think uh, companies went all in on data. You'll be surprised how dependent they are on internal data. I'm not talking about external. External is, is easy to justify, but kind of justifying internal, kind of right? Kind of asking uh, like, how do I optimize internal? What do I optimize for? Those are kind of kind of new questions we're hearing more. It's, um, even, it's even more than that. I think it's, we need to ask a question, do we need all this data? And it's a question I don't think a lot of companies no. are asking. No, we, we don't need it. We don't need all yeah, this it's data. like, uh, because Don and I have been to a lot of discussions about retention periods, for example, for yeah. our big data. And at some point, like, let's just delete it. What will happen? We'll, we'll, I mean, we'll be fine. And, and I think a lot of, I don't, I don't know, I, we're not actually, I'm not actually saying that. But I mean, I mean, there is, discussion needs to be made about, because at some point it reaches such a high complexity in cost. And so many moving parts that you need to ask yourself, do I really need all this? And I think that's something that each company needs to always re- reiterate on and, and ask these questions. And I think that's a good culture. You know, that I, I, I'd like to add something. You, you, you were talking about uh, questions that we ask ourselves. And, and I can say like that the, like after many years working in, in data, I, it, sound, it sounds <laughs> you sound old. You sound old. dorky. Yeah, no. But I, I find myself thinking, like asking myself different questions <laughs> As time goes by, like I, I'm, like my concerns shift, and like I ask myself, like recently we started talking about like how we should like um, better structure the, the the group, the infrastructure group, and then I started asking myself like where do the lines cross, like where does data start and and ends when there's like backend infra starts and ends, and and we have all those interfaces between them, and I think it's a really like fascinating question to ask, and it's also in the in the way that like how data uh, stack connects to the like. Uh, APIs or, or like like a data driven architecture, sorry, event based architecture, and like where do the lines cross? I think it's very very interesting. Yeah, I think I think we're actually seeing the world move a lot. Like it's it's becoming more engineering an engineering world than it was before. Like it's it's less and less about like just being data. So data is coming from somewhere. It's been produced by someone. It's been even been managed by someone that's probably in, in the product or engineering world. And I think before we used to have like these silos where, you know, uh, we had analytics teams just hand- manage data. And I think that we're like at, at more mature companies. I think the, the question is like, do they re- can they really manage it? Do they really have enough information? Are really taking the responsibility off of the engineering teams? And I think it's kind of like we just talk about like boundaries is I think these are, those are also changing all the time. Yeah. Maybe take us at like how the boundaries look at kind of the specific companies you're working for, right? So in a sense, you're kind of providing core data infrastructure for your company. So say I'm like a neighboring engineering team. I'm trying to build this new, uh, I don't know, data application or kind of just data, internal data experience, whatever. Uh, kind of right, where do I interface with your teams and like what are the types of uh, services in a sense you provide them? So we are trying to build the, the kind of like the methodologies, processes, and tools around producing and consuming data by all those types of customers you just talked about. That's, that's where we are. And that means that in most cases, when you build a data, data application or some data experience, then you'll be interacting with one of the tools that we have. So it's either going to be something that we bought and we basically implemented and integrated or something that we built that's like very specific for this organization. And we always, and, and what, we, what we like to do is kind of like optimize that all the time. So that's what we do. So we figure out, okay, we have this customer and we want them to have like the, to create the best data set or the best data application, right? So it's going to be the highest quality. It's going to be really fast to create. It's going to be really easy to consume for consumers. So how do we get there? And that's where we add all the different layers of the tools uh, that, that we either build or buy. Um, so I think that's kind of like where I see the interaction, specifically around the data. And, and, and like, well, for us, like, first of all, we're really like, because we talked about teams being really lean, but we're not, not kidding. Like the teams are very, very small and we support a lot of people um, given services. So we are really focused on building a self-service data experience. I'm going to borrow your words because I like it. Um, but, but it's all about experience and how we make this experience better uh, and, and help the developers and engineers be more uh, self-sufficient and, and, and like uh, free to operate within their domains. Uh, and it's always like um, maintaining this balance between like allowing them to, to like run freely and not, um, um, I'm trying to find a nice word, 
uh, destroying our vision <laughs> for how the yeah, and also and also taking care of, of your of our people, right? We 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 don't want to be just giving out support every day. Like we're not we we are product teams, like in a way that we're actually creating internal products, just like Fireball, for example, does for its customers. But in the end, yeah, we both are lean. So we cannot do support. I mean, no one pays us to do support all the time. And I think it will be really a waste of our time. Like our engineers want to build things and not having to support. So self-service is a really big thing. Um, and kind of like providing with our customers with the tool to debug the systems, to run it, to own it. to And have to enforce best practices yes. as well in a way that will not ruin their lives and experience because it can be like a real drag to like being blocked in CI with every yeah. step that you try. So so it's it's a matter of how to like enforce these like in, in a smart, elegant way. Um, and, and through this, like create the things that you, you believe in and you think that are instrumental for the data platform. Gotcha. So going back to this previous example, right, of like retention periods, for example, uh, say I'm an engineer, I kind of want to use the kind of awesome data utilities you and your teams provide. And I say, wow, I really need like a 10 year retention period. At what point uh, kind of does someone question this choice? Kind of? So is this like part of the core or kind of the education you guys are doing inside of the companies or is this ultimately up to the consumers? So I think it's both. Like we, we always have a choice between creating validation in CI, CD or where you create or whatever it is you do, um, adding some rules on top of it. We're getting some alerts and monitoring. So we can do everything and we can also do education. We can also go make sure that we have really good guides and, and we do sessions with everyone and, and talk to them about the, what, 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 is, what is actually happening. So for example, like- And it depends on the weather. It depends on how it, they feel on that certain day. So for example, yes. if they're angry on that day, there will be more about consolidation and, uh, and kind of measuring best practices applied. Yeah. You're talking and when about they're like happy, first, then yeah. it's about self-serve, pushing more data. To, <laughs> it's, well, it's a never-ending cycle, but the truth is, team, I, I, the truth is, like, even myself, like, um, I'm, I'm, you constantly ask, like, does it need to be centralized? Does it need to be decoupled? Like, all of those complicated uh, 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 terms. The truth is, you need a team that knows better. And that team knows better most of the time, not all of the time. And that team learns faster because they're domain experts. And if they're actually capable into translating that into best practices, which are amazing if they work, then they make everyone better because the truth is most teams are, don't have a DNA for data. And the truth is that if you look at data, how it's being applied today versus a year ago, then most teams are f- like are not even close to having a DNA for data. So I think like a data like IT crowd, you know, the, I don't know maybe some of you know the the, the, the show, the British uh, like that is how it all started, right? It was all about conflict, uh, and they think teams that win with data they get addicted and they start depending on experts and domain experts like you. So first, kind of we salute you because I think like the reason we asked it, it's because we. Like, like it's hard. It's hard for those teams, and uh, those in those times it's even harder because they need they're now inbound, outbound. They do a lot of stuff. So first, we salute you. And second, uh, you are important. And third, if you go, if you, like if you don't deliver, then yeah, the business is shut down in so many ways that you can even imagine. I think because it mostly slows this. down, and it, it it causes like there there are like issues going on. It's like we we just help you know protect. Uh, and make sure that people do good things and not, you know, cause no, I like hap- Eldad's version. I okay, feel very we, we important. I feel world. very important. We, yeah, we yeah, are I like the it. critical I, path. I'm very I get that. Pr- yeah, no, I want the critical path. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to add something. I wanted to add two things, but I forgot one. So I'll add <laughs> I one. I wanted to add, but I'll give you to add <laughs> your things first. <laughs> no, but I, I think that like, um, like an, another another conflict that we have is that like following what you said, like we do data all the time. Like we practice data, we we weave this, we we eat this, and and we, we, that's all we do. Uh, well, we do more stuff now, yeah, but yeah. but basically we're like we have that's hobbies. Our, that's, we also that's have our hobbies. DNA. That's our DNA. We have yeah. a, a DNA. But the problem is like th- working with generalist developers, like they can have they they can encounter this this uh, I don't know they have uh, an epic on on some data pipeline or something that they have to do with like uh, data infrastructure uh, but like the specific developer might not encounter anything related with data for a long long time and by the time they get back to that feature to fix something to add something it, like 2 years can go by and a lot of the times the stack has completely changed within those 2 years and they're like what the hell just happened so 
and I think it's different between like the the culture and the DNA yeah. between ZipRecruiter and, and Yapo. But at Yapo, like the full stack developers, they all like they do like pipeline building if they need. Like they all have like in all the teams, all the product lines, all the domains, they all have like uh, um, uh, features and stuff that are related to to data and data infrastructure. But it's not a day-to-day thing as it is, I don't know, talking about like uh, a infrastructure related with uh, Java, for example, uh, because it's not something they do and practice every day. And it's also like a battle that we like keep like uh, trying to solve and, and get better at how to like engage our users to understand what, what, what are the pain points. And oh, I remember what the other thing I wanted to say is that... The, the, oh, I, want to, I want to react to what you just said. But, but I'll forget. But, I'll okay. just say it and then you react. Okay, all right. So... And, and, it's really and fast. so when, I, will, I will forget mine. So, at the minute, so the <laughs> one of the things that we use um, uh, more and more now is is like creating the right observability around data, and it started mostly around cost because it's like the the big thing, right? In the past, like uh, six months at least. Um, but it's not only cost, right? It's cost and it's performance and like and creating this observability in a way that is actionable for the teams. First of all, it's engaging. And it's also like really, it helps to bring them closer to the to the material uh, in a way that they can comprehend and understand and relate to their actions. So I also think it's something like very strong that we invest in. So I, I want I want to add to on the, on the first thing or the I second? don't know, I don't know <laughs> not about cost it's different but you now confuse me. Anyways, I just want to add. So Doran mentioned that the organizations are different, and I think when I when I got to Zip, I, I was on like we were, we have the same culture. We're the same person basically. Just uh, I'm, I'm a woman. Yeah, she's a woman. I'm a man, but the same the same person. So um, but in in general, like we we were trying you know to have our generalist developers you know use big data, which really they didn't really know how to do it. So we helped them and created like a lot of structures around it, interfaces, so they have to they can do it with really easily. In Zip Recruiter, you mean? No, in Yotpo. Ah, okay. to go. But <laughs> but when I got to Zip Recruiter, I I kind of like saw something else. They have a new persona that I we didn't have before called a data engineer. And I think that's kind of like related to what you said before, Eldad, is like, actually, in both my teams, actually, maybe in three of the teams that I have, um, we're not the experts, actually. We are experts in something. We know to how to build infrastructure. We're good at that. Uh, we understand the product. We understand our users. We can collect the feedback. We can, you know, we understand like technologies. The platform architecture. The platform, we're, we're good at that. But how to actually, and what kind of data pipelines to write or ML even. Like we're not data scientists. We're building an ML platform. So that's really different. We're actually try not to be the expert and that like in their day to day, but on our day to day and like figure out like, just like, again, like Fireball does for its customer. You don't have to be the best in the data or understand all different uh, types of data pipelines people use, but more like understand like what your customers need. And oh what no, kind of- our, our work oh. is harder. Okay. So oh yeah, yeah. I get it. I you get need it. to do both. Yeah. So, so I think it's, no, it's nothing to say, path. right? Benjamin, like building a database, it's the hardest thing in, in the universe. <laughs> by, by far, by far. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so yeah, I think, I think for me, it's very challenging. So I have like, I think in data, it's a bit different because, you know, we do understand data pretty well, but like in ML, we have to understand our data scientists where they have so, and they're, they're not just one person. They are many different people with many different cultures and needs that they need. And we need to create a platform that will help all of them at the same time. And that's really difficult, which we are not, like we, we're not really understanding what they do. So I think like that's also in the data world for, for us as well. So our experts are ever in the company and we just, you know, we, ha- we know how to gather feedback and how to build a really good product. So, but in Yotpo again, was different. So I'm just giving two perspectives. Right. So like that, that sounds super interesting, right? Then like coming to ZipRecruiter and kind of adjusting to, to kind of this like different company and different team structure, uh, like, how, how's that going, basically? I miss the one, basically. That's that's that's, but that's what happens. But I, we do podcasts together. We, we do together, yeah. But it's if I need, I need it on a day to day basis, and like I, I really, it's really missing. So basically, he do, he got he went from data engineering to data science, and it's hard, and um, there's a lot of science there. But it's the same data, so at least yeah. that, right? Yeah, um, I have one word left from from everything that I did before. No, I think I think. Uh, so I, whatever I did at Yotpo, like it still helps me with the challenges, but it's a different organization. It's d- different yeah, size. Culture is a big part of what we do. Yeah. It's, it's really important to understand like what the culture you're stepping into and what's the culture that you want to push yeah. 
for. And I think what I did, like, I'm, I'm going to be really blunt here. What I did when I entered ZipRecruiter is like, oh, I know how to do data. Like, I'm, I'm, we're, we're experts. We know what to do. And I try to push my agenda. And I figured out really quickly that it, this is not what this organization needs. It needs something really different. And maybe even if I am right, it's, I cannot just push it. Like, we need a culture, something, and culture change takes a lot of time. And maybe in some cases, you can't even complete it. You have to, you know, live with something else. And I think uh, that's kind of like what, what I experienced when I, when I, when I joined ZipRecruiter. But I'm, I'm do you good. have kids? Do you have kids? Oh, I have too many kids. Too many kids. Too many. Too many. Okay. Kids. Three, three for me, two for her. You seem experienced. You seem experienced. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we trust. We trust you'll manage, and you will figure. Uh, you will figure the kids out, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because it's a new family. But you, yeah, yes. you have lessons learned from the previous family. <laughs> but it's amazing. It's actually we kind of never got, at least on our show, to hear that version, that, uh, those challenges from that perspective. And, um, so yeah, thank you for that. Okay. Benji, go to the, you know, we need something formal. So pick the next formal bullet that Tamar gave you oh. because we are like, have uh, to do something formal. Yeah, we can, can we do something? We, have, yeah, we haven't even really opened the formal questions and an agenda yet. Um, We're not formal people. That was all intro. That was all intro. Oh, up wow. until okay. now. All right. Ah. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> that, that to, to get more formal, right? Like, tell us about your goals for the next year, right? Because you've already hinted at it. Kind of six past months, kind of things change, right? Things are focused much more maybe on cost efficiency now and those types of things. So, like, what's what's the things you're aiming for with your data teams over the next year? So, I think um, Zip is kind of like in a in a strange position. We we basically are rebuilding our entire data layer from scratch. Uh, it's an, it's a, quite a big company to do that in in this time, so it's kind of like very challenging. So we're moving away from like previous architectures and 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 even technologies, and just like we're moving everything to to just behave differently. Um, so right now, our challenge is the quality of all of this migration, and, and in general, just quality. So. Um, up until now, a lot of the different use cases created like um, data that is not at the top quality. So, like there have been testing before and ways to measure quality of data and monitoring, but in the end, like there were many, many unstructured things along the way. Um, so we're now trying to create um, this culture by technology. So we're building the different tools to help make that into a structured process that's like repeatable, it's easy to use, um, and it's just like no brainers. Just give you like high quality data. So we started with uh, uh, schemas. So we built like a way to document schemas, write schemas in protobuf for each of your data sets, um, be able to kind of document everything about that data set in a way that's kind of people to consumers can actually you know understand what it is they're consuming. Uh, we're creating new ways to create data pipelines based on events or or uh, um, um, in different ways so by either, either by SQL or in Scala we're creating infrastructure around that so to help the producers you know create uh, high quality data as easily as possible without having to actually you know uh, um, um, deal with a lot of the the complexity is of doing that by yourself. So adding a lot of automation on top of that. Uh, we're going to build a new semantic layer. So, you know, we have a data set that's great, but how do we actually use it? How do we aggregate on top of it? How do we join it to different other data sets? So creating that extra layer that's like kind of like explains the consumption patterns of the data. That's something big that we're going to build. We need to switch a query engine. We're right now using Athena. So we need to think of something else. Um, so Fireball. Fireball, right? That's an option. Um, it's always the first and last option. But yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and freeze for a second with that thought um, question. You 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 yeah you, know, you talked about how you wire. You're using protobuf. Like, are those things that you embed within your legacy or existing? Let's not call it legacy with your production system. Assuming that over the next year, step by step, you will kind of be able to unplug and plug and play new stuff. Or are those uh, practices and, and principles that you apply only on new projects? Like. No, we because are, you're saying you're moving the business to a new platform. Like we are moving you, everything, and at the the end goal is basically deprecating everything that is um, old, and we have deadlines for it. Like it's been, it's quite aggressive. Like I'm, 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 it's it's good in a way. Like we we're actually moving. We're not just you know doing everything new is going to be like greenfield, and everything old is going to remain and, and crappy. Like we have to move everything. Um, so that's going to be like something that in the end we'll just have something new, and everything else that's not on new will just be destroyed. So I think that's also, that's why I talked about before about the question of like, what do we actually need? So these are questions that I'm not being asked because I'm, I'm more like the technological side, but our BI developers and, and analysts are asking those questions all the time. Like, do we really need this report? Who actually uses it? Like, how, why is it so complicated? Do we really need all that data set behind? So building that 
um, uh, the data layer is not just about the infrastructure behind it, it's also about the data itself. And I think all of those layers are being rebuilt. So it's interesting times. I guess for, for it's got, like it's a, it's an entirely different story at Yapo, but I think it it can sound really really similar if I, if I say it. But I I can say like looking like for the year from now, I think the challenge divides into like two parts. One is like in the world of analytics, it's actually combined, you know. Um, and and again, we're also like restructuring the data lake, and and also I think like the whole escapade with with dealing with cost. Um, very very seriously, very very seriously has also got us to think of like, are we doing stuff um, efficiently enough? Are we like doing all of a lot of things like not in the right way or like suboptimal? Or and and I think that like the the uh, rearchitecting of the data platform. I talked before about DBT and the infrastructure that we build around it, and and it really like it embodies all the like agenda. Uh, that we have towards how data should look like in our organization, and and we are also like working on migrating everything, and 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 like this is very difficult, and it starts from the like the actual like S3 buckets and where data uh, uh, lies. It it goes on to like data contracts and data owners and how we preserve this. It goes on to data quality, and all the way to like. Exactly like Lirana, I mean, everyone is talking about semantic layers and, and data catalogs and like how we, we push this thing forward. And I think that like we, we could have worked on this stuff like a year ago, to not, maybe not semantic layer because something is really happening now, like these times, it's really, really hot. But I think even talking about the data catalog, like we could have started working on, on this like uh, two years ago, even three years ago. But I think that we needed to get to this um level of understanding and like having the organization understand like what they need from from data and for us to like reach the same point where we see things eye to eye and the importance of things like and, and that's like returning to what I said before about data manageability and the other part of it that's like it, it, it goes together is that um, like currently a huge part of the data platform or like all the raw data, most of it, not the big data, by the way, but a lot of the data in terms of like number of data sets comes from CDC, where we stream data from the operational databases with the BZM into the data lake. And we understand that this method of like replicating normalized databases and, and like tables into a data lake and like having everyone or not everyone, it depends like how you layer the data transformations, but having people need to reconstruct the logic and like need to understand like what the team that like built this architecture of how like that data is modeled for an application and build this into something that makes sense uh, for analytics, for example, or even for the product when you want to like push data in to make, I don't know, uh, a moderation view for, for a B2B customers, it doesn't really make sense. And it doesn't make sense in so many ways. Um, it's, it's, it's also it's also about like the coupling. You, you have someone build an application that is used in production to serve some data or to serve something for the customers that is built like in a way for MySQL, which is like you have a couple of tables, you have some join keys. Like, that doesn't really make sense for analytics. Like it's not, it wasn't built for that. And when you couple that, that means that a production team or the team in charge of those tables are, are stuck with those like these schemas forever because someone in analytics actually utilizes it, but it's their tables. Like why is anyone using those tables? So I think like it's 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 also about that. Yeah, it's it's like like really understanding that we need we need to um, like publish this these data contracts or these data facades and have like the the operational teams in charge and be the owners of these data facades and for the analytics to to like rely on that and like moving onwards and and this like goes on to like. For us, it's probably going to go to the direction of using the output box pattern, and and it's it's a big thing because it means that we need to like restart the whole like uh, what's it called silver bronze. What's the bronze? Red bronze comes before silver. I yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so it's it's like restructuring the whole bronze layer, and and it's just something quite big, like more technical than what I talked about before. But I think it's a big part of it when you're talking about like rearchitecting the platform. So Benjamin. To someone who is just an engineer, not a data engineer, um, even though you're building databases, um, <laughs> which is the think, hardest thing in the world. Think about, in the world, in the world, the world yeah. yeah. <laughs> think yeah. about like a lot of that stuff that's being discussed is like uh, when 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 
when we, we used to write and read uh, design pattern books in software engineering, right? So you'd go, you open a book and you had like 25 patterns and you had 25 handy patterns. And you know that there's so much experience being uh, embedded in each pattern that you even learn them by heart because you just assume that's, that's, the, that's how it should be done. And data doesn't have it. So that team, a lot of what that team is, is doing is, is trying to figure it out. A lot of the stuff is, is common and you could say, okay, like we could start treating that as, an, as a, a design pattern, right? Data design pattern. A lot of that is unknown, right? Like I've, I've heard about semantic layers since I was 16, <laughs> when the first time I uh, started dealing with data. And yes, 44, Sison said a semantic uh, layer. Yeah, but exactly. the actual... We invented the semantic layer. It was 20 years ago. <laughs> but now it's cool again. But, it belong, it's cool but again. it belonged to a BI tool. And, and now it's, it's also decoupled. It's like another, everything is getting layer. decoupled. Yeah. Yeah. It's just El, El a diagram. The long game for this podcast was just to show how visionary he is. Exactly. That's set out and, and, in the beginning <laughs> to just exactly. drop this. Yeah. Yeah. But the truth is we called it semantic and uh, it was just the because rebranding it was so of semantic nice to make it cool. have a diagram. Something the joins are different. just, you know... You yeah. drag and drop the boxes and the, and the join line follows you, et cetera, et cetera. But you're right. I mean, uh, back then data was so easy in terms of metadata, in terms of who is using it. It was nothing compared to now. So it's just uh, uh, reinforcing everything you're saying. We need it. Uh, not, not, most of it is not solved yet, um, but it's nice to see that there, there are patterns emerging. Just just to to add to what you do, like one of the things that we do actually is actually write playbooks for different data scenarios. Like we, so we do that in like with the Data Guild, which is another um, entity that we have at ZipRecruiter. But like that's what part of the job to actually create those. Like, and I think each company probably has their own, and that's probably why there's no the single book for how to write. Like Data Mesh tried to and think create some kind of standards around it, but I mean it's not dive really deep or to each technology and each and each kind of a, a pattern like it's inside. because it's culture driven and it's a kind of evolution like product driven and like what's the product right now what's the culture right now what's the what did they go through did they go from oracle three months ago where they're born like like did they go through the yacht ball experience like cloud native startup day zero data driven that's how we win so many ways to win or lose with data so many practices to follow or not but um, amazing, amazing to hear it. Like, uh, Benjamin, you see, like there is reason to wake up every morning. There is reason to build the data. Benjamin asks me sometimes, why do we need to build the database? Why are we doing this? Yeah. You see the why pain? It's so the hardest hard. thing in the world. It's too hard. What's it for? Exactly. Exactly. To save the world, uh, Pinky. Uh, exactly. so, yeah. I, I appreciate you giving me back my sense of purpose. <laughs> that was the purpose of this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> So go, uh, go engineer. Awesome. What are you doing? Why are you talking to yeah, us? Yeah, just That's leave like, everything and go, go build, build something. Database. Yeah. Build some nice, really, really neat index. I don't know what you I'm saying. Guys, we're frozen in time and space right now. We don't want to disconnect and go back to real life. <laughs> you know? Uh, all right. So bef before I go back uh, and kind of build an index or something, uh, Liran, <laughs> Doran, any, any kind of closing Closing remarks uh, from your end, tips, tricks, anything else you wanted to say? I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know if I have any tips or tricks, but um, yeah. I, I, th I think, like, I just think I said it so many times, but I can, I can repeat myself. But again, I, I, I want to say that, like, for, for a very long time, we... <laughs> Liran used to laugh at me always that uh, I'm I'm like a, a data infrastructure engineer that that doesn't like data, which which, which is kind of uh, yeah, it's it's a it's true. It's cool. It's it's a cool thing. It's, it's special. It's uh, that that that's my yeah, that's my mojo. Uh, it's it's good for nothing though. But <laughs> but I think that recently, uh, and again, the the motivation was cost. Uh, but I think that we like really doubled down on like analytics uh, on, on what we do. And I think it's fascinating. And it's also about like self-measurement, also product measurement for the product that we build and also for like observability, like I talked about before. And I think it's fascinating. It makes my our job like much more efficient and, and it really helps to, to, to bridge with our like internal customers. So th that's my tip, I think. Yeah. I think... I think if I if I also want to add to what you just said, it's like those interfaces are are kind of like what interests me right now. It's like 
So we call like the analysts are called in, in typical decision scientists and we have BI and we have data engineers, we have data scientists, we have ML engineers and all of those need to work together and they're all using the same platform. We're not like, they're just, and I think by the way, in some companies, they don't, they don't use the same platform. There is like the snowflake area that's only for the analysts. Uh, and then you have a, like a data platform based on, based on it, like it's only engineers. Um, so I would, I would like to have a world and I think that's what happens in both of our companies where where we work really well together and we're using the same platform, the same tools, and, and we are all enjoying because I think that's how it should work. And I think like having those organizations disconnect. And by the way, that's another thing, organization. Why are they disconnected? Why aren't they sitting under the same roof? They all need data somehow. They different database to... licenses bought by different managers. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's good for you. That's good for, not good for the world. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I think I would like to see us um, um, kind of like help each other better, like all the different those different departments. And I think that's kind of like what fascinates me now. And I hope I hope I have a better future. Boom. Amazing. Love it. <laughs> Awesome. So, yeah, thank thank you so much for joining today. Uh, was was a total pleasure, uh, and kind of good luck with the super ambitious projects you you guys have over. Thank the next you. Year. You too. You really have the good. biggest yeah. like uh, ambitious. Yeah, I hope you yeah. quote, you're uh, quoting uh, right uh, now as yeah. you speak. Like oh, yeah, you should. Yeah. Under like, the table. <laughs> <laughs> have listened to a word you said. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you for joining. Bye. 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 The Data Engineering Show is brought to you by Firebolt. It's the cloud data warehouse for insanely fast analytics over terabytes of data with fewer resources. 